Hello and welcome to 6.4 Areas of Surfaces of Revolution. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find surface area of a curve that is rotated around an axis. Uh, so you see in the diagram I put here, we have a, a horizontal line, and that horizontal line, which is here from A to B, is rotated about the x-axis, and so we're finding the area of that surface. You can think of it like it's a cylinder. We're finding the area of the outer walls of that cylinder. Okay. And the, the figure on the right uh, that says not to scale, that's our uh, cylinder now uh, cut and then rolled out to, to show the, the surface of that rectangle, if you will. So let's take a look at our uh, definition. So it's going to involve an integral from a to b, and it has 2 pi times y times the square root of 1 plus uh, dy dx squared uh, with respect to x. Okay, and you'll notice that, uh, and this is nice that we're following this section after. Uh, well, previously we did uh, the section on arc length, so you'll notice the arc length formula in there as well, uh, especially with the, the square root piece. So it's nice that we have some practice with that, and then we build on top of the, the arc length with the, the 2 pi f of x, uh, and that will give us the, this will give us the surface area, okay? So let's take a look at our, um, and you see the two versions, I should point out, the two versions of the formula uh, are there. One with the dy dx, uh, and y, and then the other one with f of x and the f prime of x. Okay, but the same formula, just two different ways of writing it. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example. Let's find the area of the surface generated by revolving the curve y equals 2 times the square root of x uh, from x is between 1 and 2 about the x-axis. And I included the graphic here to show you guys what, uh, what piece that is. So we have the typical curve. It's a square root function with a coefficient of 2. So it'll be a little bit steeper than a traditional square root function. And then we're only going to take the piece from 1 to 2, and it's that curve that is going to get revolved, and it's that surface that we're finding the area of. Okay? So let's start off then with our formula. Let me just put it here. Let's say S equals... And we'll do uh, from B to A. So this is going to be from 1 to 2. We have 2 pi. Times our function. Our function is 2 square root x. Uh, maybe I should just do this in generic terms first, and then we'll, we'll plug in. So it's 2 pi y, and then we have the square root of 1 plus dy dx. And we'll just square that. And then with respect to x. Okay, so like we did with arc length, uh, what we will do is figure out dy dx first. Then we'll square it. We'll add 1 to it. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So if my y is 2x, then I'll put the 1 half power here. So 2 times x to the 1 half. 
And then let's take dy dx. So that'll be one half times two x, drop the power by one. The one half times the two will cancel. So I have x to the negative one half. So another way to rewrite this is one over x to the one half, which is one over the square root of x. Okay, so that's dy dx. Now when I take dy dx and I square it, that means I have one over the square root of x, and I will square that. Okay, so that gives me one over x. Okay, so far so good. So now when I put this uh, and I add 1 to it, let's see, I have inside the square root, I have 1 plus 1 over x. Now I can simplify that a little bit. What I'll do is I will then make uh, inside the square root, I'm going to make this into a common denominator between the 1 and the 1 over x. So that 1 I'm going to transform it to x over x plus 1 over x. That means I'll have x plus 1 over x. Which also allows me to write this as the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x. Okay. Now this is significant because I'm going to show you guys in the next step how nicely this is going to work out. Okay, so that's the piece. That's the piece that we just did here. So this we just took care of. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our, our function. So our original function was 2 times the square root of x. And then we're going to evaluate it, simplify it a little bit. And then we should be able to integrate nicely. Okay. So we have integral from 1 to 2, 2 pi. And then our function was 2 times the square root of x. And then this piece was the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x dx. Okay, so now notice I have a square root of x in the denominator, which can cancel with the square root of x that is here. Okay, so now I have uh, my 2 times my 2 pi, that's 4 pi. That's a coefficient. I could bring that out in front. So I have 4 pi, integral from 1 to 2. And then I'm left with just the square root of x plus 1 dx. Okay, so it works out rather nicely. So now my square root of x plus 1, that's my x plus 1 to the 1 half. So when I go to integrate that, and I don't have to worry about the chain rule because my derivative of x is just 1. Let me integrate it directly then. That's x plus 1 to the 1 half, so keep that in mind. So when I increase this by 1, it becomes x plus 1 to the 3 halves. And then I'll multiply by 2 thirds. So I'll do times 2 thirds of x plus 1 the three halves and now evaluate this between one and two okay so now let 
Let me make this a little easier for myself. I'll bring the two thirds and I'll multiply with the eight pi. So that's eight pi thirds. And now I could plug in my two. So I have two plus one to the three halves minus one plus one to the three halves. Okay, so that gives me 8 pi over 3. This is 3 to the 3 halves minus 2 to the 3 halves. So remember what we did in the previous video. The 3 to the 3 halves we could rewrite as uh, 3 times 3 to the 1 half. Same thing with the 2. That would be 2 times 2 to the 1 half. Right? The 3, think of it like it's 3 to the 2 halves. And the 2 to the 2 halves. So then all we end up with is we have 8 pi over 3 times 3 square root 3 minus 2 square root 2. Okay, and that would be the final answer. If you wanted to distribute the 8 pi over 3, you could, but you don't have to. You can leave it like this. Okay, so that would be the final answer. Let's take a look at another example. For this one, let's revolve it about the y-axis. Okay, so as you guys could imagine, when we adapt it to the y-axis, the function has to be uh, x in terms of y. Then we take dx dy, and we integrate it with respect to y. Okay, so. Okay, we got example two. I put the graphic here on the bottom right to give you guys an example of it. Okay, this is our typical uh, y equals negative x plus one. But we just uh, rewrote it with x in terms of y. So that would be x equals one minus y. Okay. And it's the only the piece between uh, 0 and 1. Okay, so keep in mind when you do the bounds, um, the limits of integration, C and D, you're, you're doing from here to here. You're doing it based off of the Y value. Okay, so it'll be between 0 and 1. Okay, so... We have our x equals 1 minus y. Let's start, start by taking uh, dx dy. This one works out nicely. dx dy is just, uh, well, derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative y would be just negative 1. OK. So now if we take dx dy, and we square it, so we take negative 1 and square it, so we get negative 1 squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Okay, next, if we plug this into the square root, sorry about that, let's scroll down again. We plug it into the square root and we have the 1 already in there. We got 1 plus 1, which is 2, so we have the square root of 2. Okay, so let's set up the integral then. Integral we'll have between 0 and 1. We have 2 pi 
times our function x equals is 1 minus y. And we have the square root piece, which we have there, times dy. Okay, so now uh, let's put some stuff together. I have the square root 2, and I have the 2 and the pi. So basically, that those three can multiply together. So it'll be 2 square root 2 pi. That'll be a coefficient outside the integral. Okay, so 2 square root 2 pi. I pull that out, and I have 1 minus y dy. Okay, and that means I could now integrate this nicely. I have 2 square root 2 pi. And then when I integrate this, I have integral of 1 will be y minus integrating the y, that would be get y squared over 2, so 1 half y squared. And then we're going to plug in 1 and 0. Okay, so let's plug those in, and the rest is arithmetic. Okay, so we keep this 2 square root 2 pi on the outside, plug in the 1, so 1 minus 1 half of 1 squared, minus 0 minus 1 half of 0 squared. Okay, well the second half, you see right away that the second half, that's just 0. So you're really dealing with this first piece. Okay, so we have 2 square root 2 pi, 1 minus, 1 squared is 1, times a half is a half, 1 minus a half is a half. So I have 2 square root 2 pi, and then I have the 2, which will neutralize the 1 half, so only thing left would be square root of 2 pi. Now let's put the pi in front. So that would be pi times the square root of 2. And that would be the final answer. Okay, so just uh, any questions, let me know. Uh, you could also bring it up during class when we meet this week. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.